Hi, welcome to another edition of Fully Booked and Bonkers with us, Ian and Bev. I hope everything's been well since the last edition. Um, nothing really fantastic. I had my hair cut today, as you can see, so it's a little bit shorter, looking nice. But you go to the hairdressers and you, sorry, the barbers, as you do, and um, and you basically say, <laughs> I can't do that because you can see it. Oh, what are you doing to me? Nothing. Okay. Rabbit you, Anyway, sister. I said to him, we're just walking. He said, sideburns. Yeah, just tidied him up a bit. And he cuts the bloody things off. So I'm walking around like this going, I've not got any sideburns. And they're so. lopsided. And they're lopsided as well, so which is hurt. But anyway, it was a nice morning out for me. Now, Bev is, <laughs> Bev's in the hot seat tonight because um, I did the review last week. Bev's doing the review tonight. And Bev is doing a review on an author I know nothing about um, called Sarah Sheridan. We believe it's Sarah Sheridan because there's no H on the mm. Sarah. Okay. okay. Um, so apologies if it's wrong, but we're going with Sarah. Is that right? Yes. Well, okay. Sarah. Tell us a bit about author, the author Sarah Sheridan. Well, <clears throat> as well as being a writer, she's an activist as well. An activist? Yes. An activist in... Well, she's particularly interested in promoting or raising awareness of women's history. Okay. And I suppose um, specifically in Edinburgh, which is where... Um, Sarah comes from and me too, just in case you hadn't gathered that already. Um, so Sarah, Sarah's um, written uh, a couple of book, books lately, one that I'm not familiar with yet, but I know uh, how it came about and it's um, <coughs> Where, Are, Where Are the Women? And it, it regards the lack of um, statues towards um, women in Edinburgh. So they're, celebrating they're, the achievements of what women have, have, have Yeah, have there's there's lots of statues in Edinburgh okay. yeah. um, memorialising the deeds of men. Yeah. And there's actually five to dogs. Okay. And the magic number for women is... Two. Two. Yeah. Queen Victoria, Two. down in Leith, okay. and a, a lady called Helen Crummy, uh, out in the sticks. Oh, she's tucked away um, somewhere in the... Yeah, in the like, Main the, Road. Yeah, um, she was the founder yeah. of okay. the Craig Miller Festival Society. Yeah. So not really on the tourist track okay. in, in Edinburgh. Okay. And, and Sarah Sheridan at the moment is involved in the campaign to have, oh, I suppose it's Edinburgh Council, um, to commission a statue to Elsie Ingalls. Elsie Ingalls? Yes. From Little House on the Prairie, like no. Laura Ingalls. Funnily enough, she house. wasn't in Little House <laughs> on the Prairie, Sorry. but she was. She was in the, in the late uh, 18th century and early 19th okay. century. She was a doctor, a gynaecologist, a okay. surgeon. Okay, I didn't mean um, to belittle. Well, sorry, no, just no, no, that's right. no, but she she was a founder of um, women's hospitals in in Scotland, and there was the Elsie Ingalls Hospital in Edinburgh, which doesn't exist anymore. But, but Sarah is active in um, the campaign to have a, a statue commissioned in Elsie Ingalls. So Elsie, she was memory. a gynaecologist and she was a doctor and a surgeon. Yeah, she was a, a very, very um, important pioneering woman and okay. she deserves a statue. And the founder of the Scottish Women's Hospital. <coughs> yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. So yeah, that, that is, that do, is, that is to do with gynaecology yeah, and childbirth. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's nice, like that. it's fabulous. Yes, yeah, so, so women have their own so, hospitals. Right. Okay, so we'll stop me spraffing on about <laughs> that for a moment. Um, as interesting as it is, what about the book? So you're going to review one one of these? these yes, books. and I I had it. I had to scream. Oh, <laughs> do <laughs> my thing. And now, this is Skynet. Because I mentioned <coughs> Queen Victoria, I had the cover on my... Well, find it then. Yeah, I'll find it. But now, because Keep we were talking about too. Queen Victoria, it's Queen Victoria Dining, mm. Restaurants and Food on Cruise Critic. Okay. What the hell? Right. Skynet. I'll, the I'll try and find. Yeah. If you can just... Oh, Watch here out. we the, are. The toasters look. are going to go look, live look, in a look, minute. Look, They're going to grow legs. It's like about Transformers. Shh, Skynet. Sorry. The book... I'm... <laughs> Doing this week we is the fair botanists fair by botanists, Sarah okay. Sheridan. <coughs> okay. And it's a it's a book. It's it, it it's not really the usual thing that I read. Um, historical fiction. I don't do Downton Abbey or any of that stuff. I'm, yeah. It's just not my thing. But I was really drawn to this book by by reviews that other people had put on, and also. Um, just by comments and things that were kind of flying around Twitter at the time of publication. So I thought, you know what, I, I'm, I'm going to read this book. <clears throat> Love my Kindle, 
you get so many opportunities to, to uh -huh. read books for a much more reasonable price. Um, if you're if you're not sure, it's it's quite it's not <coughs> it's not such a great investment as it is in buying a book. And particularly well, for this one at the time, it was only available in hardback. Okay. <coughs> so anyway. Back on. Yeah. Not my usual <coughs> genre. Started reading it and within a few pages I absolutely fell in love with the book. It is so beautifully written and so entertaining and also informative as well because so Sarah's what, done a lot of research okay. and she's she's given us a gift really in, in her, her story. Okay. It's a fantastic story. And it's the main female characters are fictional, <coughs> me. but they're I suppose they represent real women living at that time, which is just as we're coming out of the Scottish Enlightenment era, where women and men talked together in, in salons where they discussed matters of science and politics as equals. And and women, though, though they ruled in a world, they didn't rule, sorry, they lived in a world ruled by men, yeah. they, they were aware of the power of their own intellect. And these women not only excelled in matters of education, but they also used their intellect to drive oh, ideas. On, so on. we're, oh, Jeff is showing inordinate interest into a packet of biscuits that Ian left lying <coughs> and he's got previous for biscuits and he, he can't actually because he's allergic to gluten yeah. so and they're party to... rings they're my party rings party rings, rings. right crack on sorry <coughs> well there's there's a number of characters in, in this book but I suppose there, there are two main characters both of them female and one of them is a lady called Belle Brody and she is the original loose woman Meaning loose, loose woman. woman. She's a she's a loose woman at the higher end of the spectrum. So she's a I suppose you would call her a courtesan. Okay. She entertains gentlemen, okay. and that is how she makes her living. Mm -hmm. She's a very attractive young woman, and she makes a lot of so she's money. An, an, an independent woman in a man's world. Oh yeah. Okay. She's she's in charge of her own <coughs> destiny, and she's also in charge of her own bank account. Okay, that's important. But her her wealth depends very much on her youth and beauty and her, her, her desirability. So <clears throat> Belle knows, she understands Stoke. that her desirability as a, a courtesan is not going to last forever. So she's got a bit of a sideline. She um, creates perfumes. Okay. The, the word perfume comes from a uh, Latin for I it's uh, par it's smoke, parfumus, it? which means something smoke. smoke. Yeah, yeah. With, with smoke. With smoke. Yeah, or through smoke or something. Through smoke. Through smoke. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Through smoke. <coughs> so you're you're kind of looking at something through smoke. So the art of perfumery, perfumery was a very much a dark art. If this had been a hundred years earlier, Belle Brodie would probably have been burnt at the stake if she was found out that she was dabbling with this kind of stuff. Okay. And this is the this is the woman that's very um she's she's yeah. a courtesan, yeah, she's very courtesan. independent. Okay. But <coughs> she's her, she oh, sorry, wants to produce the ultimate scent. Right. And it's not just gonna influence human emotions, it's it can actually make someone fall in love with you. So this is the root So of the, the story, possessor yeah. of this perfume yeah. Yeah. could make someone fall in love right. with her. Okay. So that's her goal. Okay. She can so, make a lot of money out of that. <laughs> And the other, the other woman is uh, Elizabeth Rashid, and she's young. She comes from London. She's a well-to-do lady. She was married to a gentleman, but he died, and she has come to Edinburgh at the invitation of her husband's family uh, to live in Inverleith House, which is actually within the Royal Botanic Gardens as they exist today. <coughs> and the actual gardens are coming to life around this house while Elizabeth is living in it and while she's making friends with Belle Brodie and their, their paths are crossing and intertwining. And the original botanic gardens were in St Anne's Yard which was near Holyrood Palace and it was in the 1860s that they were moved 
they literally dug up trees <clears throat> and they wrapped them in their roots and they transported them on horse-drawn carriages from St. Anne's Yard. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Had to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they wow. took them to Edinburgh Botanic Gardens in Inverleaf as it exists today and they replanted them and the trees survived. Fantastic. And it was due to the, right. the diligence of a man <clears throat> called William McNabb. Okay. So he's in the book, but he is actually a real person. There's quite a lot of real people in the book as supporting characters who help <clears throat> um, to, to bring the story to life. And it's all about... Elizabeth was an artist and she used to draw flowers at Kew Gardens in London. So when she comes to Edinburgh, she is fascinated by this plant, the Agave oh, Americana. The century plant. Yes. yes. It flowers yes. once in a, yeah. it's well, supposedly, supposedly, once in a century. Yeah. It's actually about once every 30 years. So right. once in a lifetime for something yeah. that was living yeah. back then. And if the flowers don't last very long, it's like, oh, no. So Elizabeth was to, commissioned to capture the flower as a piece of art for posterity. And Belle wants to nick the flowers because she wants to make perfume. perfume. Ah, okay. And the so story is the story is, right, okay. is about yeah, these two very different women okay. that do they, do, they know, do they know each other exist and they're fighting against each other? No, no, they don't They don't know each other exist initially. They both, right. one's already in Edinburgh, one arrives in Edinburgh, and their paths cross. And it's an absolutely fantastic story, largely because Sarah's done an amazing amount of research. So she's bringing to life Edinburgh when the new town was being built. Being built at the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, the... the you know, the lengths, you know, to get to Ratho Station, which is like half an hour in the car, took them half a day in a, in a yeah. coach and horses. Right. But so, so she's she's bringing together, together all these pieces of yeah. Edinburgh as it was coming together as a whole city between the old town and the new town. And also later on Leith, where Queen Victoria is now, just, that became part of Edinburgh as well. So <laughs> Edinburgh was just a... You know, it was a collection of villages and around about yeah. a, a yeah, central yeah, yeah. old town, yeah. and it spread and spread as cities do. And oh, absorbed. they do. Where, yeah, where where our, my formative years was the same. It was an old town, um, and then it became a, a new town, and there was various villages dotted around. And then yeah. now they're just parts of the of, of the town. They just yeah. call the parts of that town. So, so yeah, that's that. Mm. Unfortunately, that's. Unfortunately, it's progress, which maybe... Mm, no, no, yeah, it's progress, it but, but for me, it was the history of the place that I, I grew up, and yeah. I mean, having um, walked in the Botanic Gardens so, so many from, times. from Edinburgh as well, yeah. you mentioned that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and she, she lives there, <coughs> and I would love to live there. So basically, there's a mystery between one wants to nick it for the perfume, one wants to do the artwork for it. Yeah, and, how and the story out. is about their, their lives, and... And I'm, maybe I'm not making it sound very interesting, but it is. It's absolutely fascinating because you've got all the science behind perfumery and also <coughs> beer making. Um, and, and just the way society worked at the time. And Sir Walter Scott is there. And there's an impending visit by the king, who was King George IV. And in Edinburgh, there's a bridge. Oh, George IV bridge. bridge. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... All of this was going on at that time, and obviously a bit before my time. But I loved, I loved reading that story. Yeah. It was just, it was so full of colour and light, and so much information, but all presented in an extremely and absorbable lots of settings way with, within the Botanic Gardens itself. We've, yes, I, I've visited Botanic there, Gardens three times. There are lots of scenes in the story, right. and Elizabeth <clears> lives <throat> in Enverleith House, which is now in the middle of the gardens. Right. Oh. Okay. And there's a cafe and a gallery, and, and it's, it's it's really lovely. So the main character's a female. Would yes. you say the book's more for the female reader, or could any any, any kind of reader? I think anybody could yeah. enjoy it, yeah. but that's up to men, really, if, yeah. they, if they want to be interested yeah. <coughs> in women and women's history. And that's something that um, writers like Sarah Sheridan and, and their, their um, work as activists are trying to achieve. It's... The world doesn't just belong yeah. to men, it belongs to all of us. And, and women's achievements yeah, yeah. are just yeah. as important. Just as important, just as everybody's. It shouldn't matter. Yeah, shouldn't I think matter. we should stop it here or we're going to get, end up yeah. straying into, <laughs> into something sexist territory. Yeah. Right, so you'd recommend it to anybody? 
Yeah, yeah it's, there's a, no it's a fantastic book. There's no age limit on it, sex, book. violence, nothing. It doesn't sound like... Well, it's it sounds not like a women. children's just, book. No, it's, but it just sounds like a, a, a very well-written, intelligent it's a story. Lovely, it's a lovely story. Yeah. I really yeah. thoroughly enjoyed it. Fantastic. Excellent. Next week, next time, uh, who knows? Yeah, let's not go there. We're not going to go knows? there. Who knows? But the sideburns might be growing a little yes. bit. Yes. Um, we didn't get any dog distractions tonight, which is the first time. No, we did, because oh, Jeff yeah. was trying to steal the biscuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, no, we did. The ginger ninja. Oh, yeah, but it's normally Ruby, but she's great. Yeah, she's out, over so the She's out for the count. Right. Thank you very much for sticking with it. We hope you like that review. And again, if you want to see more detailed review of it or any other ones that we've done there. We did on one, the book. one book so that we could be quicker. And we've not and been any quicker. We've, in fact, we've spraff. been twice as long. Spraffing. Yeah. Die. <laughs> what can you do? What can you do? It's been fun. See you soon. Take care. Bye.